Arg. What can I get for you? Oh my gosh, you're really cute too. Hi, I'll take a couple chocolate chocolate and raspberry macaroons and the pink lady latte, please. Coming right up. No, dude, she's really cute. Holy cow. Okay. Mm. Why can't I? Okay, fine. I, uh, can we have a DLC where I can romance her, please? <laughs> okay. Lily was Kay's assistant who mainly stuck to the cafe's finances and computer work. However, when Kay was an end, Lily took over becoming the face behind the cash register who gave you what you needed. Lily, where's Kay? Kay had to fly out to New York suddenly. She said it has something to do with delivering something special to someone. I'm not too clear on the details. Thanks, Lily. Ah, okay, sounds like fun. Wish I could go to New York. No, I don't. Don't we all? Here you I are. Really don't Enjoy. wish I could go to New York. Mm. I took my order to a far corner and table and got comfy. The pink lady latte was a spe cafe special that everyone adored. It was a normal latte with a very subtle raspberry flavor. The foam was pink, too! Imagine that! Pink! Before I could indulge, however, a voice stopped me. Oh, hey! Hey! <laughs> I looked up to see Naomi enter the cafe with a smile towards me. I smiled back, not expecting to see her. Hey, Naomi! Mind if I join you? Mm, I, I'm never able to answer that one. Not at all! <laughs> Naomi nodded before quickly getting herself a coffee cake, slice, and a latte and joining my table. I've been wanting to try their latte for a while. Is it any good? Are you saying that you've never had the signature pink foam accented lady, pink lady latte? What is wrong with it, you, Naomi? You call yourself a freaking customer. Ugh. Ugh. I like it. It has a nice raspberry flavor. Naomi gently blew over her latte to cool it. Wait, hold on. I feel like... Hold on. Was I supposed to answer something else? Uh, maybe. Naomi gently blew over her latte to cool it before sipping it, smiling at the taste. Mmm, this does taste good. I'll have to get this from now on. The raspberry is a really nice compliment with the coffee. I giggled. Naomi loved food when it wasn't made in the school cafeteria. She wanted to own a restaurant one day, but always focused on studying the business side. Naomi had natural cooking skills that made grandmothers seem like novices at making you amazing food. I doubt this. You should get macaroons next time with it. The raspberry macaroons definitely bring out the flavor in the latte. I should. Naomi slowly grew a, a look of thought on her face as she stared into her latte. Probably thinking about food again. Yeah, that's it. Not the big problem secret that she has been keeping from you. It was during these moments when I got to see a simpler, almost beautiful side of Naomi. Almost beautiful. Dude. Ugh. She was very smart, smarter than me. However, she always held seriousness very close to passion, dedicating her heart to a dream. It was enviable. I sipped my latte and ate a macaroon before speaking and breaking her thoughts. Thanks, by the way, for coming to my impromptu party. I know it was last minute and all. Naomi broke away from looking at her drink to look up at me in surprise, then with a smile. It was my pleasure, really. I mean, our pleasure. Suzu came too, and all. <laughs> Go on. Tell me what your problem is. Naomi blushed a bit before clearing her throat and taking a sip out of her latte. Then she looked to me again with a slight frown. But hey, how are you holding up from that? I'm sure meeting all those business people was tiring. Heh, <laughs> it wasn't anything I couldn't handle. It was just the suddenness of it all that tired me out. I'm sure you did great. It was a great party. The food was amazing. It was amazing, wasn't it? I slowly began to remember the party, remembering how I felt alone throughout it. I wanted to be with my friends, but I had to put on my business air to impress my guests and my father. Did I try too hard? It was supposed to be a simple party, but it felt like a job interview. <coughs> Before I got too deep in my thoughts, I felt a hand gently cover mine. 
I refocused my thoughts to reality, seeing Naomi gently holding my hand. Hey, I know that look. You're about to overthink it. Don't. You did great. I'm sure of it. <laughs> Naomi believes in me. <laughs> I stared at Naomi, unsurprised that she caught into onto my thoughts and happy to know that she cared. Thanks, Naomi. <laughs> Naomi smiled and blushed, giving a small nod. She was absolutely adorable when she smiled like that. I don't know how, but her smile was able to make the room lighter. A lighter shade of fucking pink. Okay. <clears throat> pink. <laughs> Naomi then pulled her hand away, placing it on back on her latte with her other hand and cup, cupping the mug and sipped her drink. Naomi licked her lips and let out a sigh. This is really nice. A relaxing Sunday afternoon at a cafe. Honey, you okay? Ah, oh, dang it. I have to save. Dude. Oh my gosh, I have to save. Okay, 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 okay. I can't get this, wrong, this one wrong. So, I'm just gonna wing it. It's almost like a date. All of a sudden, Naomi's face turned pink as she looked at me. Confused, I tilted my head and gave her a quizzical look. Naomi, are you alright? You're turning red. Naomi must have snapped out of her trance. She fanned herself and tried to calm down from whatever was on her mind. Oh my. <laughs> uh huh. Naomi brought her la latte up to her mouth and began to drink, practically chug it down. It was actually kind of cute how flustered she got from a simple statement. I giggled quietly to myself before sipping on my latte. Naomi, na na Naomi, na <laughs> Naomi, and I eventually lost track of time and wound up chatting until the late afternoon. When the cafe wasn't hopping, Lily would join us and we talk about silly things like TV shows or mu movies. Movies. Oh, wow. It's getting late. I gotta get home or my mom will flip. Ah, okay. Would you like a ride home? Yes. That would be great, thanks. We quickly headed out with Naomi driving me home. It was nice to be alone with her rather than have the explosive Suzu around. I preferred Naomi's calm logic anyway. The remainder of the night passed by, surprisingly uneventful. The boys continued to train with each other, but were kind enough to stop and make me dinner. I was glad for that. Oh, I can skip now. I packed my bag and carried it downstairs to the kitchen. I quickly made myself coffee and toast, not having time for anything big. <coughs> I let a soft sigh as I sipped my coffee. I felt great, and I felt like nothing could stop me today. Come at me, day. I'm ready for ya. I looked at the time again. Time to go. Yada yada yada. I wasn't given any names, so I have to fend my for myself in that fight. Uh, stand up, walk away. Um. Shit. Uh. Wait. I could see Malik pull the trigger before bracing myself. What the fuck? I opened my eyes again to see Malik's jamming his figure against the trigger, trying to shoot me to no avail. Either has the barrier spell on her. When you're losing your power. Shut up! I'm not losing shit! This little brat must have that spell on her! <laughs> Kinda makes you pissed, huh? I felt a wave of relief run through my body. The other devils laughed at Malix, which made him angrier. I say. Shut up! Ooh. Malik suddenly moved his gun towards the nearby devil and pulled the trigger. I stared wide-eyed as the bullet from Malik's gun rammed itself into the neck of the devil's body. The wound spouted fire and blood, causing the devil to scream and flail in extreme pain before falling limp to the ground. As the body hit the floor, it's... <laughs> the bodies hit the floor. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Mm. As the body hit the floor, it began to almost deform and melt. Blood and black ash poured out of the wound in every opening the body had. Oh my, every opening? Okay. Causing the smell of death to quickly fill the room. I felt like gagging as the body eventually stopped moving. The body began, became like a deflated balloon, 
showing me the true nature of Malgus's gun. It was now just a pile of blood and skin. The bullet had burnt up the muscle, bones, and any structure the body had to give it its form. That could have been me. That could have been me. Anyone else wanna laugh at me? Huh? I do. Can I? Can I laugh at you? The devils around us shut their mouths, obeying the warning of the obvious master of the space. Malx growled before glaring at me. As I was saying, it must be some holy magic or some shit like that. There it is. <laughs> yeah, blame it on the holy magic, bro. The girl who had kidnapped me stepped up beside Malix, looking at me. Malix wrapped a strong arm around her waist and pulled her tight against his side before burying his face against her neck. Iris didn't react, but continued to stare at me as Malix ravished her shoulder and neck and, and neck in violent kisses for some reason, because that now is an appropriate time for that, I guess. Uh, eventually, Malix pulled away, licking his lips before looking to Iris' face. I ship it. <laughs> okay. Without another word, Eris walked around me and out of my line of sight. As I turned my head to try and follow her, Malx raised his gun at my face once again, forcing me to stop moving. I may not be able to shoot you yet, rat. But there are other ways I can beat the living shit out of you. Hmm. Uh. Right. No way was that happening. No- Oh, fuck you, Malix. <laughs> Finally. No way was that happening. No way was I gonna let myself be a victim of this. I... I will... What are you whimpering? Are you praying that the boys will come and save you? <laughs> I closed my eyes and took a breath before snapping up to one leg and sweeping my foot across Malix's face. Ha! Hold on. Ha! Ha! <laughs> Malx flew to the side and rolled, rubbing his cheek in complete shock. I could feel Eris step back away from me, leaving me to look at Malx and shake my foot out from the from the hit. Malx quickly hopped up and growled at me, obviously surprised but irritated beyond belief. You little bitch! You think you're tough, huh? Well, I'll show you your place! Come here! Oh, my place. Oh. Oh. You really shouldn't have used that word. Malix charged at me, dropping the gun that would never hurt me to the floor and reaching for my face. However, I quickly crouched down and swept my leg in front of me, knocking Malix down once again. Sorry. It's street fighter noises. I rolled back away from the fallen devil and glared as I rose back up to my feet. Just because I'm human doesn't mean I can't kick your ass. I placed my hands in front of me before sliding over to Malix and slamming the tip of my foot onto his head. One of the devils around us tried to step in, but Eris held out her arm, stopping them. No! Stay out of it! Let Malix deal with it! Oh yes. Definitely come at me one at a time, please. As commanded, the devils that surrounded us stood away from the fight. The group watching us was lost in intrigue as I stood up against their leader. I continued to kick at Malix, making street fighter noises, who tried to block my kicks with his arms. I brought a foot up before slamming it down into Malix's chest. I definitely heard a rib or two crack at the impact, causing Malix to lose his breath. What I didn't expect was him grabbing my leg and pulling it out from under me. Ha! I fell to the ground, landing with a loud thud. I felt pain shoot up my- <coughs> Hold on. Uh. Uh. I felt pain shoot up my arms and run through my body to the impact- At the impact my body had on the ground. I tried to push off, but the pain forced me to stay down. Malix took that chance to roll on top of me and pin me down, glaring and smirking down at me evilly. As I tried to get him off, the futility of the situation dawned on me. I was fighting a devil. I was just a human. I wasn't magical, nor was I special. As from other routes, we know this is wrong. I wasn't gonna beat him. It's useless, woman. You're as good as dead. Bet you're afraid of trying to fight me in the first place now. 
fear began to consume me. Oh, for the love of God, please someone find me, I prayed. I hoped that I wouldn't have to keep fighting. I was becoming desperate. You have major balls trying to find me. You're not even a man. You're a puny woman who's about to get what's coming to her. Yeah. Yeah. I have giant balls, dude. On my chest. What made everyone in that warehouse drop our fighting faces was this screeching of police sirens coming closer to our location. Malik's murked even wider. It's time to have fun, boys! Make sure you kill them all! Oh, shit. The devils all seemed to get excited and started to walk past us to meet with the cops, but a loud finger snap stopped them and made them turn around. Malx and I looked to see Eris with her hand in the air, post-snap. Eris, what are you doing? Enough, Malix. We've wasted enough time in this stupid town. I'm getting out of here and I'm taking the rest with me. Couple fight. Woo! I didn't know whether to laugh or not. I bit my tongue as Malx got angry again. Like hell you are! Boys! Do as I say, or else! None of the boys moved. Eris snapped her fingers again, causing the boys to rush back past her and out another way from the warehouse. Malix, it's over. You can't even beat a human girl. You're losing your powers. Lower devils only follow higher-ups that actually have power. Shut your mouth! Ooh. Malik summoned his gun to his hand and shot multiple times at Eris, who somehow managed to teleport away from the shooting line and reappear by us. She shook her head, letting out a sigh, before grabbing Malik's by the neck and pulling him off of me. Malik started to choke as Eris stared coldly at him. All this for a bunch of pretty boys. You must be stupid and desperate. Eris looked to me, making me tense up. Human! I suggest heading home to your pretty boys. You don't want to get involved in a supernatural investigation. It's a pain in the ass. She then turned back to Malix, glaring daggers into him as he glared back at her. You really think women are weak? Let me fix that, sweetie. Oh, goody. Feminism bandwagon. Okay. And with that, Eris vanished into the shadows, taking Malix with her. As I was left alone, the police siren stopped. I looked over to the open passage to see the incubi with a large police siren megaphone <laughs> staring at me in surprise. Fatality! <laughs> Where is he? I swear I'm gonna... He's gone. Eris took him and left. They won't be coming back. I was all s it was all so surreal. I was helped by a devil, but I quickly shook off the feeling. I was alive, and that was all that mattered. I fought to stay alive, and there I was. Alive, and what not. The boys tried to question me, but James cleared his throat, catching the attention of his brothers and me. Let's just get you home, miss. There's nothing more to see right here. Right you are. Nothing more to see here. Mm -mm -mm. Altogether, we began to walk out of the warehouse back home. There was no way in hell anyone was going to find out about this. Ha ah, ah, ha, get it? Hell, because that's where demons come from. Ha 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 ha. Uh, skip. The air became t st uh, that became still with tension. The realization of the situation hit the boys like a wave, forcing them to turn to me in curiosity. They had remembered their deal, and they had stacked up against each other because they didn't they didn't fan out properly with a skip, and were now awaiting me to decide their fate. However, I knew my answer. I couldn't keep them here. I knew I couldn't. They were demons, and I was a human. I needed to deal with my own life beyond anything else. Oh wow, they don't even give you a choice this time. Because you didn't romance one of the boys. Oh. If the if they boys, if the boys stayed, my life would only become more complicated. I think that would be best. James nodded in agreement, keeping a professional tone in his voice as he replied to me. Then we will be gone before <laughs> you wake, miss. Thank you for letting us stay here as long as we did. I could feel the obs upset emotions of the incubi reverberate in the room, but I couldn't change my mind. I had too much going on in my life to let them stay, no matter how much I wanted them to. It was a pleasure to have served you, beautiful lady. It was hard watching each boy turn away from me for the last time. I stood there, watching them all 
uh, for them waiting for them all to leave the lobby. I guess this is goodbye. Yeah. Have a good one. I stuck to my guns. I knew I was making the right choice. Thank you for having us, miss. Maybe we'll see each other again. Maybe. Maybe not. Goodbye. As Damon left my sight, I finally let in air that I was denying into my body inside. My life would return to normal. Well, as normal as it could be. However, I was smarter and wiser than before. I knew of things beyond humanity now. I'd come to learn about the boys and about the existence of the supernatural. I wasn't blind to what was beyond human life. Not sure why I can, can't skip now. Learning of this made me more open-minded. Yada 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 yada. Poorly written character. It's me! It's me! She's talking about me! Not Kit. Oh shit, shit. Shit, I fucked up. Not. Not caring for the class we were in. <laughs> I fucked up, I'm sorry. Naomi, what's wrong? 